Hey, GovCon Giants, Eric Coffey here. Today's guest, Mr. Lincoln Tyson. He is the founder of TPM Group, which he started in 2009. And in today's interview, we're going to discuss how he accredits his journey to God and his faith. And then we're going to talk about all the exciting things that he's doing and that he's done in his past and how he's growing his organization during COVID and even what his plans are for post-COVID. He actually helped with the transition of the Obamas, and he is working in the White House. So again, one of the first people that I've had an opportunity to interview that actually has contracts directly with the White House. He's part of the transition team and helping set up the stages for our government when you see it on TV. So again, a lot of exciting stuff. His business is IT, relocation, amongst other things. So again, I'd love for you to give me all of your comments, your feedback. Tell me how great this was, how much you enjoyed this episode. If you like, we can even try to bring him on again. So definitely take a look. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know your feedback in the comments below. Thanks, guys. My name is Lincoln Tyson. I am the owner of TPM Group. All right. Hey, listen, nice to meet you. Just before we got started, you were telling me about your business. You said, hey, what you do is not rocket science. You just have to do it well. Can you say that again? <laughs> well, um, yeah, you know, what I do is it's not rocket science. Um, it, it, you know, what we do is provide um, solutions for our customers um, so that they don't have to do it. We do it well. Um, and uh, we just want to make sure we have the best customer service that we can have. Um, but yeah, no, again, it, it, it is not rocket science, um, but you, you do need to be uh, very focused and very diligent um, in our task. And, and again, I, you know, I agree with you, but sometimes people call me an alien. So I, I, for the people out here that, that believe it is rocket science, what do we say to them looking on the outside, looking in saying, uh, it's a little bit harder than that. The, you know, the government is a, is like its own type of Rubik's cube in a sense. How did you, how did you figure out the Rubik's cube? Um, from, from sort of working from, uh, within, um, I was okay. a contractor for a large, uh, construction company, yep. name building company yep. for several years. Yep. I see um, that. And I was, uh, uh, housed at some really large clients, uh, the National Cancer Institute, uh, the National Institute of Health, um, the American Red Cross National Headquarters. Um, so, you know, just different large, very large clients, um, the FDA, um, uh, Center for Food Safety and, and Applied Nutrition. Um, so you, you were know, there with, with Gil Bain? I was at, at all those places with Gil Bain. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you those. were on the federal side of Gil Bain. You were Gil Bain federal. Absolutely. And so, okay. yeah, on, on the logistics side, relocation management side. Okay. Yep. As an assistant project manager and a project manager. Now, what made you believe, hey, look, you know, I want to go try this on my own. Why, why leave Gilbane? They've got good benefits, good package. I'm sure you're making decent money. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty good. Um, there, were two, there were two main reasons. And um, the first is going to sound a little silly, but um, I was at a client site. I'm not going to say which one, but uh -huh. um, monthly, uh, there were two of us there that were Gilbane employees. And monthly, um, the Gilbane uh, regional office would send the billing, um, a copy of the billing that the client <laughs> was receiving every month. Okay. And, um, you know, after a while, when you look at the billing and then you look at your check stub, right, and you see just how far apart they are, right? <laughs> they weren't, it was like 10%? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. 20%? No, no, no. Uh, I would say, <laughs> You don't have to say the uh, number. I would say well over fifty percent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well over fifty percent. All right. Yeah, and so when you see that monthly, after a while, it starts to wear on you. Yeah, uh, I would imagine. And, you know, especially when you're when you're when you're in a situation where it's you providing the services, you're on site every day with the client. Um, you know, they 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 know who the company is that you work for, and they know what they're capable of doing. Um, but you're, I'm the one that's there for two years handling this project. So, you know, other than having that big name behind me, why? What's the difference? Why, right. What's the difference? Exactly. So I could save the client money by, char by charging less 
than what this large, you know, behemoth of a company is charging, right? Um, which saves them money and and puts more money in my pocket. So it was kind of a win win situation. Don't you think that though the government wants some of the times they want the large guy to feel safety and secure? Oh, absolutely, they do. Okay. Absolutely. And um, you know, and I don't think it's anything wrong with that. Um, as as long as they're not closed minded to giving some small businesses a chance when they have the proper resumes and past performance. Sure. Right, absolutely. Um, you know, if I'm a contracting officer, if I'm a COTAR, if I'm a project manager for the government and I have a specific task to do, um, you know, you, you, you want job security, right? And so you want to bring contractors in that have a proven record and reputation for getting right. the job done. And so right. that's how these large becom- companies became large, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's no, just right. You know, be honest about it. And so, yeah, I, 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 I totally see it. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of us that are, you know, small business owners or just even small business executives that have come from these large companies and, sure. and were able to soak in, you know, a lot of the knowledge that they were able to give us. And, you know, then we can just roll that over and, and do it for ourselves um, and, then, and then also help others by bringing others on board. So I'll tell you uh, something that's interesting. Another fun fact, I actually work with two small businesses now that are doing extremely well that both came out of Kilbane. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I mean, and one of them, he's 8A also. I help them, um, but they're, they're crushing it. And then the other person, um, he's too big to be 8A, which tells you where he's at, right? And, not, uh, a bad problem not a bad problem to have. And, um, but they both came out of Kilbane and he actually told me, Eric, when he looks for like people to hire, he says, if they come out of Gilbane, they were trained really well. I would agree with that. He says those, really they have an excellent training program and they do a really good job. So yeah, Gilbane, like, Gilbane's a great company. They're, right. they're a great company. Right. And I've, I've watched them grow over the years. As a matter of fact, I'm a uh, subcontractor to Gilbane now. We've done a ton of work together. Since. And you know, it's funny as you say that a lot of, the, they are as well. They do a lot of work with Gilbane still uh, as subcontractors. So it looks like Gilbane, they're really smart about how they do business. They don't necessarily uh, kick you to the side. They're like, okay, you're, you want to be successful? Hey, that's better for us. You come out and help us out. Absolutely. No, I think that's a great, I think that's an excellent uh, entryway back in. So, But you left Gilbane and you went to Phelps and Phelps. I went to Phelps and Phelps. Um, so, no, I, actually I had a, uh, there was uh uh, a piece in there that probably doesn't show on my LinkedIn, okay. but um, I actually started my own company, Tyson Consulting, mm. uh, before I became a member of Phelps and Phelps. Okay. And, um, myself, uh, the owner of Phelps and Phelps, and the owner of a third company, um, we were all contractors um, at the National Cancer Institute together. Okay. And that went on for maybe about a year or two. Um, okay. We were doing very well. Um, the client was very happy with us. Um, and then Phelps and Phelps obtained um, their 8A. Gotcha. Um, myself and the third company were not 8A certified and um, the government felt like, um, you know, it would be better for us to join forces mm. um, instead of them having three sub three subcontractors um, on site. Nice. Nice. Um, okay. So now they were 8A. You did that. So you, you've actually spent about six, seven years now learning and working. Yeah. Well, I think that's important. Because I, I don't want to leave anything out. I don't want people to think that you had, um, like, they actually just threw you in there and you knew how to do all this stuff and you were so, right? Like, you like, man, you figured it out so quickly. And I, I want to talk about the journey. I like to talk about the roller coaster, the ups and downs. Do you sure. have a, and I hate to say failure story because I, I think the word failure is almost like porn. <laughs> it's overused. So, I, you know, you have a challenge story. That you want to share? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I have one. Um, absolutely. Um, I, I had uh, my first, um, and it was my first and only uh, divorce, and that was you know business divorce, and that was uh, at Phelps and Phelps. Right. And um, so you know some things transpired that you know the three of us didn't agree with, and uh, I went my own separate way, um, and you know started TPM Group. Okay. Probably about a week to two weeks after I left uh, Phelps and Phelps. Um, right. It was a really difficult decision because 
um, when I left, we weren't under good terms. Um, and, you know, there was possible litigation um, looming. And, um, you know, when, when, when things happen like that, you know, assets are frozen and, you know, there yeah. are, you know, money's not fluid, right? Yeah, sure. And so, it, you know, it was a, it was a, a huge um, transition in my life. And I had to really sit down and think, you know, whether or not I needed to go and apply for some jobs or was I going to start from scratch wow. and, and try to start a business again and, and you know, continue my journey uh, of wanting to be an entrepreneur. So it was a really hard decision to make, um, although I made it very quickly because I, I had no choice. I had to do something. Yeah. Um, to be able to survive and you know you know feed you know feed my family so um i decided to uh to move forward and um i started tpm group with literally a couple of dollars and a uh i rented a uh a shared office space um wow. down, down washington dc literally you could if there were two people in there there was one person too many and <laughs> uh and uh you know i was i was paying 500 dollars a month uh-huh. And um, you know, I had I had zero clients, um, yeah. I had zero prospects, and uh, I just you know I hate to sound uh, you know cliche, but I had a I had a all I had was a dream, literally, and it took a while. It was not fast fast growing, but um, we we finally you know not to say that we've made it because we have a long way to go, but um, we 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 are we have sustained for sure. What did you do to get that first client? Like, how, I mean, you said you didn't have any money. And again, this is people that, I, so let's go back a step. A lot of people say, well, Eric, I, you know, I don't have any money. And, um, you know, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to pay my bills? How am I supposed to eat? Right. So it's all, it's like the MC Hammer bankrupt story. He, he's bankrupt, but he's not really broke. Right. <laughs> right. There is so a difference. There's a difference. So again, <laughs> I mean, I always say I don't have any money, but then other people say, well, you're no money is different than other people's no money. <laughs> Fair? It's all relative. It's all relative, true. right? Right. And then Oprah's no money is bigger than all our no money. <laughs> right. Right. So let's just clarify when you say you don't have any money and you were trying to get a client, how long did that last before you, you regenerate any revenue for the business that you're able to, to help support the $500 a month bill? or whatever additional expenses that you had, because you obviously had to live somewhere. Yeah. Like that. I, um, I generated two uh, clients in a, probably about the first maybe three months. Okay. Um, but they were very small jobs. I mean, right. I mean, very, very, very sure. small jobs. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, there were things that really, that I don't even necessarily, you know, do in-house. It's things that I would manage you know, typically, but I wouldn't be doing them physically. I was literally physically going out and, and doing it. you know, doing like a move job right. and, you know, I'm, you know, moving desks and, mm. you know, furniture and yeah, I was driving trucks and <laughs> <laughs> the whole night. The whole night. The whole night. And, and I like that. I like, I like to hear that. And I think other yeah, people I mean, like to hear that as well. What's that? I think other other people listening to this would love to hear that as well. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you do what you have to do. You have to do what you have to do. You really do. I mean, I, I'll do it now. It's not a problem. I was on a job site two weeks ago. It was ninety degrees outside every day. You know, sometimes you just gotta. It's a new client. I figured I needed to be there. You know. Right. No. Uh, look, in twenty thirteen, I was on a verge of bankruptcy, and I literally. Um, I had a company that didn't pay me a lot, a lot of money. And I had two guys still working. I had to finish up some touch up on this building that I had just built from the ground up. Yeah. It's 43,000 square feet. I poured everything into it. They stopped paying me months ago. Um, you know, like six months ago and you can't make a claim. And I, I took a full-time job and Uber to pay my guys to keep working. Wow. So I didn't even keep the money. Wow. I worked to send my checks to keep my two guys working to finish up the contract. Now that's I'm a test of that. I'm very proud of that actually. You should be. But you that know, it didn't feel, it didn't feel great. <laughs> yeah. Well going through it is never, it's no. never. No. You, you do come out better on the other side. Agreed. I agree. I really do. Um, now, so, yeah. So you, okay. It took you a few months. You got two small clients and then 
And then um, I brought a uh, minority partner on um, who was also a friend. Um, and he had a lot of inroads in uh, DC, the District, District of Columbia government. Right. And so we just, you know, beat the pavement together, you know, beat the pavement. And um, like what? Like, give me some examples of what is beating the pavement for you. He was, he was able to set up meetings at a lot of different agencies. He had gotcha. just formally, he had been um, a director in one of the DC agencies. Okay. Um, and so, while he was a director, he met a lot of other uh, uh, agency heads. Okay. Um, so we were kind of able to go, you know, high level to a lot of the different departments um, and just meet with them, let them know what sure. we were about, what we were trying to do, what our goals were, and then kind of, you know, see what their forecasting was. Um, and then, you know, some of, a couple of those meetings, um, you know, six months, seven months down the road turned right. into some, some, Something. Some small jobs, but larger than the ones that we had been doing. Right. Um, but still very small in comparison to, you know, what I was used to doing, like with Gil Bain, obviously, or what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, but slowly but surely, you know, because we would do a good job, um, you know, they kept calling. Um, and it took it took several years, but it got to the point where we were one of the premier uh, go to logistics companies um, in the DMV. Um, it wasn't the D.C. market. And so, um, yeah, you know, we just kind of, kind of, you know, scraped and, and, and clawed our way, um, the, the natural way, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes you start businesses, um, and there's nothing wrong with it. I actually, you know, I, it would have been fine with me if it had been this way, but you know, if you, you know, you could be a contractor somewhere and then just take that contract from the large business, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when that contract comes up for bid, you know, you've been there working for three years, you know, right. the ins and outs. And right. when it goes up for bid, lo and behold, the company you're working for has no idea that you, you know, right. you're, you're running to get it as well. Right. Uh -huh. And so, you know, some, some people start with, you know, a million dollar contract, a half million dollar contract, right. two million dollar contract, whatever it is. That's, that's the way to start your business. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the way to start your business. Exactly. I, I must say, I started my construction company with a million dollar contract. It's awesome. I did. But awesome. I was a consultant first, right? So I was a consultant working for some companies, uh, helping them get contracts. But when I made the decision to start my own company, I swear to you, I, I really do believe once you make that switch, that the world conspires to help you. And when I, I mean, I, I pick a very specific Business. Not, not, I, didn't, I did not want to do general construction. So it wasn't like I'm going to be a general contractor. I was like, no. Right. I want to get into the market for steel buildings. Okay. And I don't know, six months later, a steel building came up. <laughs> like project. Where, and, you know, and it's like. Lo and behold. Lo, I, I mean, there hadn't been one 10 years before that, right? And, there, right. and actually, to be honest with you, there hadn't been one 10 years after that. But it just. <laughs> uh, I know. And the reason why I know this is because they reached out to me again last year for a price to add some more uh, hangers. Oh, wow. So I know it's been about 10 years since that happened. And then 10 years prior to that, nothing. Wow. So, but as soon, when I made the decision, I said, I want to do this. And I found that industry, a job came up. And so my first contract was like 1.2 million. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Not bad. No, not bad. Yeah, not mine bad. was like $750. Yeah. yeah, that was the first go round. The second go round wasn't as easy, but yeah, <laughs> that was the first go round. I've got some more war stories, but oh, seven hundred fifty dollars. Wow, seven hundred fifty dollars. Do you got? Are you, are you guys you listening to that? It was my client was uh, George Washington University Hospital. Wow, who who remained my client until about two years ago when uh, one of the procurement officers she retired. Mm -hmm. um, she and I and her husband are friends to this day now. I, I met her at, you know, at a, in a work capacity. But, uh, yeah, they were my, they were my longest how, time. How long, uh, how much, okay, so your first, uh, this is a really good story. I like this. Let's stick with this. So $750. And so how long, well, how long have you been in business? 11 years. Okay, so they stayed with you for nine. They stayed with me for nine. Okay, how much do you think you did in contact with them over that time? Uh, around about number, maybe about a half a million. So you went from 750,000 <laughs> to 
to half a million dollars in contracts. You know, I, and I and I I say this. I, I actually, and we obviously we both agree we did not plan this out, right? right? But I really do. I like that. I I, I I think that gives people perspective because a lot of entrepreneurs out there are so short sighted, and they go, "Oh, seven fifty. Why do I want to do that?" Right. Right. No, you have to do it. Seven hundred fifty dollars. Like I make more than that at my job. Okay, well, let's go back to your job. Then don't go into right. business. <laughs> right, All right. Well, let me tell you. Let me say, if you get ten seven hundred fifty dollars a day, right, you're not doing too bad. No, nah, you're not doing bad at all. We do seven hundred fifty dollars jobs all the time. <laughs> we, I'll do a five hundred dollar job. Is we, everyone we, listening? We, is we, everyone we, listening? We, we, what's that? I said, is everyone listening to this? Is everyone <laughs> listening to this? Yeah, we're here to provide a service to our clients. And so, you know, some, sometimes they have jobs that are large and sometimes they have jobs that are just, they're so infinitesimal that most people won't even pick up the phone. We could care less. We're here to service you because that job, you never know what that job is going to turn into. And when we go there, you know, sometimes we, we've done things that are so small that we won't even charge. We're like, don't worry about it. You know, we, we the next time you need something a little larger, just you know, make sure you give us a call. And then now, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get the nod that next time. Or if it's something that goes out that's a bid, you know, and the numbers are close, and we're bidding against two or three other companies, we're gonna get that that extra little nudge because you know we service them in, in in a time where you know other companies just thought the work was just too small and not not significant enough. Where are you from? Uh, originally Long Island, New York. My grandparents. Uh, Migrated from the South uh, many, many years ago. And uh, I had my mother and my uncles and that generation. Uh, and then I was born in New York, um, was there until a teenager. And then when my grandparents retired, they went back to North Carolina. Um, and when they went back to North Carolina, most of us, um, their, you know, their, their children and their children's children uh, migrated back to the South with them. So, you know, they basically made that, that, uh, that pilgrimage because, you know, they couldn't find any jobs um, in North Carolina, especially, so my grandfather went to North Carolina A&T. Okay. Uh, actually, my grandfather and my great-grandfather. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my grandfather graduated, I believe. But that makes sense, though. Back then, you could, there was no mixed schools. No, 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 no. And all he could do, my grandfather uh, uh, had a degree in education, and all he could do was teach at a um, African-American school. Right. That was, that was the only thing he can do with his degree. Um, that was, you know, more progressive than, you know, the average job. Right, right. Um, in the South. So um, he moved to New York, um, to Queens, New York. And um, he and my grandmother uh, worked. He was a social worker, uh, retired social worker. I think he was there maybe 35, 36 years. My grandmother worked for New York Telephone. Mm. And she retired from there. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. So yeah, we moved to North Carolina. Attended high school there, um, and then followed in my grandfather's footsteps and went on to North Carolina a &T. Did you notice any difference between living in New York and North Carolina? Oh, yeah, tremendous. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, it's crazy because my, my parents were divorced when I was around three years old. Um, so my father lived in Brooklyn, and my mother was in Long Island. So my mm. home base was Long Island, but I was in Brooklyn all the time. Oh. So, I, you know, and, and yeah. he, that was even night and day. You know, and then you know, to go to North Carolina, I had never been any far south than northern New Jersey. Mm. So <laughs> uh, it was it was definitely a culture shock for me. Um, and especially it was all, it also had to do with where we moved to. Um, we were about 30 minutes outside of Raleigh in a, in a small town called Clayton. Um, and, you know, I love Clayton to this day. I have a lot of I have friends there that we are the best of friends to this day. You know, I love those guys. Um, but, uh, I, I was, I was devastated, you know, um, it's hard enough just moving as a child, yeah. um, leaving all your friends and everything you've always known. I'm mean, having to start all over, but then, you know, I couldn't just get on my bike and just ride anywhere I wanted. Like things would be like seven miles away. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Right. Had had Raleigh, store. It's, right. Adeline and Raleigh, things might've been a little different, but you know, to live in, in a uh, not that much different. <laughs> I, I, listen, I lived in Durham. I lived in Durham for a while. Oh, did you? Yeah, I went to RTP. I was an engineer. Okay. Uh, so I worked in Reach Triangle Park. 
Yeah. And um, they weren't that much different. Yeah. I have several family members working there now, by the way. Yeah. You could, you still couldn't go right around. That's true. They're That's still true. far apart. Okay. All right. So you went there, um, yeah. came out, went for Gilbane. <laughs> were there any signs early on when you were in Brooklyn, when you're in Long Island that, Hey, you know, you want to be a leader, you want to be an entrepreneur, did you sell candy? Did you sell, you know, blow pops, baseball cards, anything like that? Uh, no, no, I can't say that, I, that, that was, uh, that was my ministry as a kid. No, no nothing. No, not really. Um, and I never really had any, not as a young kid. I didn't really be, want to become an a, a entrepreneur until college. Oh, okay. Um, what, what, why? Uh, you know, I took this, I, I signed up for this program that was in our business school called, um, it was like, I don't know, some young entrepreneurship uh, program we had. Okay. And it was very interesting because um, I don't think the school had anything like that for long. And so it was kind of the beginning stages. So they didn't actually place you at a company to do an internship. So with this program, you basically found the company that you wanted to do an intern internship with. You convinced them to let you intern, and then the university paid for fifty percent of your wages. Mm. So at the time, I was majoring in logistics. Uh, back then, it was called transportation econ in, econ in the econ department. Okay. Um, and so um, I said, "Well, I want to, you know, do an, a logistics intern." So I contacted Mayflower Logistics, um, which was a local company in Greensboro, um, and convinced them to bring me on for the summer. Um, and it was there that I felt like, uh, you know, maybe I can kind of run my own logistics firm. Um, I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the, with the, they, they were, an, they were an agent. And so I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the owner of the agent the agency. And so, um, he just, he taught me a lot. Um, I would go back and visit them even after the internship was over. Um, and that, you know, just the wheels just, just kind of turned a little bit. And so graduated soon thereafter um, and went, went to work for General Motors. And it was there that I was like, you know what? I definitely want to start my own business one day. I, I didn't think it was going to be anytime soon or I didn't, didn't have any plans of doing it right then. But I, I, that's when I kind of like got the bug. When you, okay. When you left Gilbane and you started a consulting company, did you have any money? Uh, no. no, no, I didn't have any money. Uh, -uh. Nah. it looks like I'm going back and retracing all your steps. I think we yeah. missed that gap. We talked about when you left from the, the divorce from the business divorce, but we didn't talk about when you left Gilbane to start your consulting firm. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't have any money, but I did get lucky. Um, there was, um, when I started at Gilbane, I was at the National Cancer Institute. I was there for like a year, year and a half. Um, won a couple of awards there with them. Um, and then they, they pulled me to go to a project that was struggling. Um, and so I went and helped that project out. We ended up, you know, as a team, ended up being able to turn that project around and ended up being a successful project. Um, and so um, left there, went on to a third long-term project with Gil Bain. Um, and, and at the end of that project was when I was like, I need to go off on my own. Ironically, the first client that I was with, which was the National Cancer Institute again, um, they had just uh, received um, a ton of money in funding um, to basically revamp most of their office space, laboratories, and the whole nine. And the, the uh, director of um, the real estate office um, was saying that they needed to bring more people in, more contractors. And he asked... Um, one of my old partners where I was and he said ironically Lincoln just started his business and he's ready to leave Gilbane and so I, I basically walked out of Gilbane and within maybe a month to two months I had a contract now doesn't that sound like the story I told you earlier about me yeah it does I, 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 <laughs> mine was a 1.2 million <laughs> okay I, <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm in a different industry. I'm in construction. So, you know, you get 1.2 million, you make, your margin is really small. The numbers yeah. just sound big. Yeah. I, I like to tell people, don't be impressed because. Oh, now, we, we, yeah. do, 
we do construction as well. So no, I'm with you. I'm yeah, with you. you know, it's like the numbers are big, but the margins are small. Right. Uh, you know, like I know IT guys that do two three hundred thousand dollar contracts, but they're making fifty percent, man. Right. Right. Well, thirty. Yeah, thirty percent. You're like, wow, that's better than my two million dollar contract. <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's no, I I agree. I agree. I had a friend that did that a long time ago, and this guy was killing it. And he was buying stuff I couldn't afford. Right. <laughs> but my that's numbers look, were bigger than his numbers. <laughs> well, you know, that's a huge misconception. Um, I, I have a lot of friends who are entrepreneurs. Um, you know, with this, is it obvious in, in, the, in the DMV, the, the DC, Maryland, and Virginia market, there are tons of, you know, entrepreneurs um, and a lot of minority entrepreneurs. And so, you know, we talk or we're part of different forums. And, you know, and so it's funny because. I think a lot of companies are so focused on increasing their revenue um, and that sometimes they forget that the revenue doesn't necessarily mean that your profit is going to, you know, correlate. Um, right. You could be doing $20 million a year and, you know, to your point and be, and make way less than someone who's doing $12 million a year for sure. Right. Uh, there's a saying that says revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is king. Makes a lot of sense. I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Uh, no, that, but that's good. I, I, the other thing that – have you ever read the book The Secret? Do you remember that book The Secret where it talks about your mind? I have it back here somewhere. Um, but I really do – oh, I, have, I see it. But I really do believe that – you know, you committed to that, right? You committed to starting your own business. You had made that decision. And I really do believe that the world conspires to help. I would agree. I, um, I, I just, I believe that, which is the same reason why every successful person, and I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about success that we all envy six type success or money, monetary wise, because success can be divided on a whole number of ways. They all say, think big. And no one believes there's truth to that. Yeah. And there, and why? Because when your mind makes that switch, right, things start to come to you. Things start to fall in place. Right. Well, you know, I, we all have our own journey, right? And some people's journey of, you know, success might differ from another's, but sure. success is success, right? Um, and so, you know, to use your term, you know, the world conspires to help. I think that's very true. And I think in my instance – um, the world conspires to help, and that's all through God. Um, yes. I don't, I don't want to turn this into a you know a religious no. podcast, but um, it, it, you know when when things are really bad for me, I turn to Him, and you know a lot of you know when 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 the doors just started opening up, you know I, I really I don't I was going to say I really believe I know for a fact that it was because of my faith. And the fact that I, I had just turned myself to him and was just like, you know, God, I, I, need, I need some things to change in my life. And he just started opening doors. And so um, we all, like I said, we all have our journey, but mine definitely goes through him for sure. No, and that's actually, that's one of the questions I, I commonly ask is, uh, what, you know, what are some of the things, how, what your practice is in terms of how you handle stress? And so you just answered it. That was yep. No, and again, I, I'm a I'm a big believer in faith. I talk about faith all the time. Um, you know, I grew up in a church. I, you know, I I'm the same way, right? Uh, and I and I think a lot of people when they're dealing with stuff tend to pray. It's just when things are going good, they forget about praying. But I think <laughs> you know, I think a lot. I think all of us almost. I mean, my mom was a stay at home nurse and took care of elderly people. And I can tell you, it doesn't matter what religion they came from when they were sick and dying, they wanted her to pray for them. They were praying. Exactly. They exactly. want, they asked her, even if they weren't a praying people, they asked her to pray for them. Right. Absolutely. Sure. And, that, sure. and that example you just gave, that example is me. I do tend to pray more when things are bad. When I, when, sure. when I, when I, when I need to help. And that's not, that's not good, but I'm human. Right. No, you're, of course. Yeah. I'm, absolutely. I'm human. And so, you know, that, that's one of the things in my life I'm actually trying to work through it and be better at. Oh, that's great. Um, since we're on that topic, what other daily routines or daily habits do you have that help you out with running a business and being an entrepreneur? Um, daily habits. Um, the gym. Okay. Yeah, I work out three to five days a week. Okay. Um, and so I, that's how I start my day. I've been doing that 
um, I've been working out for several years now, but I, I've been starting my day with it mm-hmm. maybe, the, maybe the last three years. And I think that's helped me tremendously, honestly. It helps me just get focused. It helps me to get up earlier. Because um, sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, if you don't have anywhere to be or any meetings in the morning, you just, you know, you'll just, your morning won't start, really, really start until 10 o'clock sometimes. Right, you know what right. I mean? Sure. And so I'm at the gym at 7 a.m. almost every morning. Period. And so when I get, I'm home by 8.15, I'm showering and I'm right back out the door. I'm trying to be, I'm, unless I have meetings or whatever or something right. like that to do. I'm, and I'm trying to be at the office by 9, 9.15 and to get my day started. And typically they're, they're long days. But um, yeah, I think the gym is probably the biggest thing. But now I'm, I'm turning into this, this uh, I'm getting a little addicted to golf. So hmm. <laughs> I've, been, I, I've been trying to play all the time. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. <laughs> How do you that because that brings me to another subject? How how do you define your work life balance? Um, leisure, you know, pleasure, you know, family, friends. Yeah, I uh, so I am a work hard, play hard type of guy. I've okay. always been like that. I mean, I mean, literally since I was young, since I was a teenager, I, I worked all through high school, you know, um, and I've you know always played sports. Um, mm-hmm. That's another thing I used to do all the time too is play basketball until I tore my Achilles two years ago. So I just, I retired two years ago. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then so I, you know, I, I have a lot of friends in the area that um, we all went to college together. So we, we tend to hang out in each other's basements or backyards or whatever. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time with my family. You know, we're, you know, we're always doing something um, either at home or going to dinner. You know, I, 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 I love going to dinner. I didn't go to dinner that out to dinner that much as a kid. So mm. I think I'm a little, I think I'm addicted to it now. Um, wife and kids. Yes, wife and okay. kids. How yep. many? Yep, three boys. Three boys. Yeah. What ages? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't know. So 25, uh-huh. 18, and seven. And seven. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That might be me though. I could see me doing that. I could that be that might be me. <laughs> that might be me. It's a struggle, trust me. It's like you start you well not like you started all over again, but you uh Yeah, no, I started all over again. <laughs> sure. But I got remarried, so Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, that happens. I understand that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Any again, you're going through this journey, it's tough, it's not easy. There's things coming at you, people coming at you. How do you, you know, is there something that you tell yourself in the back of your mind? Is there a book that you turn to, a quote that you turn to that just kind of like sticks with you when you're dealing with all the craziness of being in business? Now, um, you know, when I, it's funny, it's, there's not necessarily a, a, a specific quote, um, but I do think about my grandfather, though. Okay. Um, my grandfather raised me. Um, as, as I mentioned, my parents were divorced when I was young. Um, and so I lived with my grandfather almost my entire life. He, he was absolutely the strongest man I've ever met. Um, and so I was just, you know, he, I would just think back to the things that he would instill in me. Like, you know, some of the things I don't even necessarily do now to this day that well. But, you know, growing up, he would, you know, I guess, you know, he would teach me how to speak proper. He would correct my, you know, grammar all the time. Um, you know, he would, he would instill uh, hard work in me by going outside and doing yard work all the time, right? And so I do think about just how much work he put in and, and how he raised two generations of kids because he raised his kids and they're doing great. And then he ended up having to raise me and my siblings and he never wavered. He never, you know, mentioned anything about, you know, um, I've already raised my kids. I shouldn't have to do it again. You know what I mean? Like he was, he never had that attitude. So I just always go back and think about how he has lived and still is living his life. He's, he's 90. He just turned 91. Now I just actually went to go visit him in North Carolina for his birthday um, in March. Um, I'm sorry, uh, a few weeks ago, I went to go see him for Father's Day. Okay. And, um, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I go back to. I go back to my grandfather and just how he has lived his life and just being, a, you know, an excellent role model. No, that's, that's great. That's good. No, I, I mean, hey, that works. Some people, they're inspired by a teacher, right? They're, 
Mrs. Jones said to me, right, you're going to be this and that. Or Mrs. Jones said, you're not going to be this or that. And so that. <laughs> that was motivation, right? That was motivation. <laughs> Either way. So that's great. Right. Uh, any books that you give people that you recommend that they read? Um, well, I'm not the biggest reader, but okay. one book right now that I'm finishing up, um, it's, uh, uh, oh, I have it right here, matter of fact, The Warmth of Other Sons. Never you heard, heard of that? that? No. Okay, so it's basically about the Great Migration. Um, and so it tells, uh, it has, it gives three examples in there of, you know, three people who migrated, um, from the South, from different parts of the South and, and migrated to different parts of the country outside of the South, uh, California, Louisiana, and I think Texas. I haven't, I haven't read the third person's story yet, but it is an awesome book to just show how far we have come um, and just, you know, the, the, the struggle in our plight as African-Americans. Um, it's, you know, it's when you, when you read these, these individual uh, stories on their plight, it's just, it's amazing. It really is. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. This one, the one warmth of other sons. That's it. Okay. It, it's 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 a huge book though. <laughs> it's, That's it. It's not, yeah, it's not small by any means. Uh, yeah, that picture doesn't do it no justice. Is what you're trying to? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll show it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no joke. Oh yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it looks like one of them novels. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. no joke. It's a uh, commitment. Uh, that's a commitment. That's, well, uh, yeah. No, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I was thinking again, again, along the lines of business and entrepreneurship, but that's great. I mean, I look, it's, it's everything doesn't always have to be business. I sometimes will, I've read books that were like nursery rhyme stories that true parallels to business. Okay. So, um, sure, sure. but, but that's okay. If you're not, hey, what about like you, before we talked about some of my previous podcast guests, you were all emerging leaders together. Yes. So any other type of trainings or programs that have helped you in terms of your business? Um, well, emerging leaders definitely helped. Okay. Um, I don't think I've done much more than that. Um, I've done some of the local programs, um, just like taking classes and stuff like that. Right. Um, did, did some continuing education um, okay. at, at the community college here. Um, as I mentioned, I, I do uh, have a construction division. We do interior uh, renovations. Okay. Um, and so I've taken just, you know, continuing education classes, just trying to brush up on stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but not, you know, the, it's funny, the, the Emerging Leaders Program is like an a executive, uh, fast-paced uh, MBA program for small businesses that I guess they deemed were, um, you know, uh, at least worthy of, you know, sustaining more growth over right, the next right. few years. Um, and so it was a lot of information crammed into like, I think it was like nine months. Mm -hmm. um, we met and we had homework and it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was no joke. It was mm -hmm. no joke. But we learned a lot. They really, they really taught you um, how to uh, look in depth in your business. Um, a lot of, you know, we have, we, we have, we're always dealing with financial statements and, right. and, you know, all kinds of things that we are paying an accountant to do, but we may not necessarily know mm -hmm. how to read them and how yeah. to break them down. Right. You know what I mean? No, I know. And, and so um, the program was basically to help you do that. And then also to help you market your company and, you know, just teaching, teaching you about, you know, elevators, pitches and, and, and growth, um, you know, um, uh, just, you know, everything to just kind of help you uh, step outside the business and help it grow without being that, that work will be all the time. Did you, let's go back to a couple of um, conversations ago. Now I see that you're 8A today or you, or you see on your profile says you're 8A. When did you get 8A? At what point? August 2017. Oh, 2017. Okay, so it's recent. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. No, it's because that was going to be my next question. When, how did you know when was the right time to do 8A for you? Well, because I had been a, a partner in an 8A firm years ago, um, I knew that you needed to be established first. Um, I, I, me personally, unless you started a business like we spoke about earlier where you just starting off with contracts, you hit the ground running. 
um, then I think it's okay to apply for 8A in your, you know, second or third year. But if you've grown, um, you know, from just doing small contracts here and there, um, you really, in my opinion, you need to wait to at least five years before you get your 8A. You, you need to be, when you get your 8A, you want to be fully up and running. You want to be uh, uh, able to go to uh, federal agencies and say, look, here's the past performance I have. Um, here's the current work I'm doing. Here's all of our capabilities. We can do this for you now. And by the way, we're 8A. That's what they want to hear. Um, if you get 8A and you have little past performance, you know, you're going to waste maybe two, three, the first two, three years of it, if not longer. I know companies that have been 8A and said, you know, they've been in, in the program six, seven years and have never had an 8A contract. Mm -hmm. So I do think you should be uh, very, very established before you get become 8A, even though it's, it's, a, it's a program that's supposed to, you know, help you grow the company. I think you, sh I think you should wait. And 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 I I uh, I agree two thousand percent. By the way, um, and it seems like a question that I ask all the time. People are listening to this for like this. If he's gonna ask another eight A, yes, because there's many <laughs> inquiries that I receive from people that are in the eight A program. I have to combat that with as many intelligent, articulate answers from my guests who are successful and what they say, because this is the case with so many folks that come to me wanting eight A that have never they haven't even started a business right and, and and i'm gonna say this you know you said the 8a is meant to grow your business but you are growing your business like i mean that's it's exactly what it's doing because for for a lot of small businesses minority businesses uh we think that like you said if you look at revenue numbers that means you're big but the way that they calculate it we're still small <laughs> right so it's like not even close not yeah. even close so, I mean, it is technically growing your business, but just again, from the perspective of, well, a big business is this number. Yeah. I can't yeah. even see it. It's not even on the screen, right? We right. bend down, it's like, it's like over here, right? And Look at the businesses that just received um, PPP loans, right? Like yeah. Chris. Right, 15 million, right. 10 million. Exactly. That's right. a business. That's exactly. what they're talking about when they say a business. When you look at, when, you, when, when, when the average person thinks of a Ruth's Chris, or Shake Shack, yeah. right? You're thinking, oh, that's not a small business, right? But right. They, they, by, by government standards, All that's right. why they were able to apply for those loans and, right. and receive them. Right. And, and so I, I agree. I still believe that, like you said, five years in, seven years in, or even like yourself, you're you know, eight years in, you're still growing a business. Like you're building a, a business. Absolutely. Um, so I think it's still going to serve its purpose for you. But you're going to be able to maximize it tenfold than you would have if you had done it in 2009. Right. Absolutely. Right. So Absolutely. that's good. No, I, 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 thank you for that. Thank you for that. So we talked about your grandfather, your upbringing. Now let's bring it forward. Now, currently, what are the services that TPM Group offers? So currently we have a, uh, a three-headed monster, if you will. So we have a construction division where we do interior build-out. Um, and, and design. Um, we have a logistics division where we do relocation management. Um, we do moving um, and we do uh, FF and E, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Um, so, you know, basically that is furnishing uh, office space, okay. uh, modular furniture, freestanding furniture, uh, the whole nine. And we also do the design, procurement, and installation of that. Um, and then our third segment, we started about a year and a half ago, about 18 months ago, um, which is our IT division, um, where we are focusing on uh, cybersecurity. Um, and uh, we also have, um, we're uh, uh, Oracle certified. Um, and so we're, we're an Oracle certified rep and dealer. Um, and so, yeah, so in a nutshell, those are our three divisions. So IT, uh, construction, and logistics. Now, logistics, I see here on one of the capability statements that you sent me, you've done some really cool projects, I guess. For, again, it's for me, a guy that's outside of the DC world. One of your right. projects was featured on CNN? The White House, yes. Okay, tell us about it. For all um, who didn't well, catch CNN. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that, look, that particular project was the uh, renovation of the East Wing. 
Um, so we handled all the logistics um, around that renovation. But we're actually, um, we're there um, seven, five days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have a five-year contract at the White House um, where we provide um, all the logistics um, that have anything to do with uh, the White House, the old executive office building, the new executive office building, anything that, that houses uh, anything that um, has anything to do with the executive office of the president. And so we man, we man that uh, seven, five days a week. So you're moving stuff around. Yeah, we're moving stuff around. But, you know, we're setting up, you know, room one. Um, typically, when you see the president uh, uh, doing anything on television, we set that up. We break that down. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, just whatever they need us to do. We're, we're on call there. Like I said, we're on call 24 hours a day. But we, make, we actually have physical staff there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So we've been there. Um, uh, end of this week will be five years. And then we just re-won the contract. Um, so we just won another five years. So we start again August 1st. Wow. So you were there five years. So you were there with the Obama administration. We were. Yeah, we moved, we moved Obama into his new offices uh, downtown. Wow. Did you really? That's really neat. And then, so then you'll, you'll see the next, you'll see whatever happens at the election, then you'll, is, that, is, there, is there anything different when you have to move out someone or the first move around or, or you don't care? You guys don't. Do you actually go to this stuff yourself? Uh, I do sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's kind of a, you know, I do. I You've go, probably I do. seen it. You've seen it a lot, right? So for you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. many times. First I've never been to White House. Probably, yeah, first couple of years I was there all the time. Right. Um, but it, you know, I have great staff there. Um, they, they really know what they do, and I have a project manager on down. Um, four supervisors. Um, some of my staff have been there over twenty years. Mm. Um, so they've they've been there since you know. Bush, Reagan. Reagan. Bush yeah. Yeah. So. Um, it's, it kind of runs itself. We run into some things here and there, but um, it's 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 a good contract. I go I go maybe once a month. Okay. okay. Or if I need to go for meetings. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's cool. No, that's really neat. I didn't uh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that anywhere on your stuff. You didn't? No. On there. I'm telling we, you, man. I, we can't we can't say we can't put no, too I, much about that out though. So no, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. no, th- sir. And I've I've interviewed guests in the past that have certain IT contracts that they're not allowed to publicly disclose yeah. because of national security. Exactly. So I do understand that as well. But um, if it is something that you can disclose, I don't see it on here. <laughs> <laughs> I've disclosed all I can disclose. <laughs> I I got you. <laughs> hey, look. I'm on your side. I just want to make sure. I want I want the world to know all the good work that you're doing, right? I appreciate it. Because um, at the same time, if someone wants to, hey, look, I you know I listen to this podcast and you know he's doing this great work. I mean, look, in my opinion, someone that's doing work at that level, uh, I would feel comfortable trusting them working at my, you know, secure site, right? Yeah. And so I would um, again, let's I'll draw back to one of my own personal experiences for about three years I worked on Fisher Island and we did all of the uh, do you know what Fisher Island is I don't okay Fisher Island is a private island here in Miami uh, it's right like going towards Miami Beach it's right off the side it's only accessible by boat or helicopter there's no bridge that runs to it you have to you actually drive your car on a barge the barge takes all the cars over to the island drops them off and then you drive on um, Oprah used to live there. Okay. Wow. Okay. And we had the contract to do, uh, uh, because it's a private island that's on the ocean, all of the salt water eats away at the concrete columns and they start rusting and cracking. They call it spalling. And I had the contract to do all of the spalling work on several of the, for several associations that manage a bunch of these high rise buildings. Well, again, um, because of the type of people that live there, they're all extremely wealthy. They, you know, I mean, yeah, your contract, maybe my contract, I don't know, to do this work is 20000 30000 They've got paintings that are a million dollar painting, in <laughs> right? They've got statues that are like $200,000 <laughs> statues. So you just can't put every Tom, Dick, and Harry out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. That makes sense? And that's what I'm trying to draw that parallel between you is, uh, yeah, mine may not be the, the, 
the pe- maybe it's not that they don't have the stature, but in terms of who they are, is it like a like if you knew them individually, these are all you know billionaire type people, right? Um, or a hundred millionaire, let's say, right, right. You know, they don't want you tracking up their floor, no different at all. Like exactly, they got live-in people cleaning, ironing, washing. Yeah. From seven to seven, like you said. Seven to seven, all longer. <laughs> all longer, just <laughs> cleaning the house from dust. But when they do come back, there's not a spot of dust. Exactly. So I was just trying to draw that parallel. Yeah, but no, I, no, to your point, I mean, it's it's great for our past performance resume, for sure. Right, right. absolutely, absolutely. Listen, a couple more things, and then we're going to wrap up today. Okay. Um, are you an early morning guy or you midnight burn the oil type guy? Um... I know you said you can start going to gym at seven, but you also yeah. said you wake up at ten when that, you were that's before. That's early. That's the earliest for me. Like All right. six o'clock in the morning. That's yeah. The, okay. When is your that. when is your brain function best? Ah, uh, my brain functions best in the morning. It does. Okay. Okay. Yeah, morning, it does. okay. But not five a.m. morning. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh, have you ever done an all nighter? Oh yeah, especially yeah. with proposals. Okay. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, tell me a, a odd job that you did that someone might not know about you. Uh, and or I, it could be, or you could have worked at a, a place that we wouldn't know. Maybe you worked at Shake Shack. <laughs> oh well, I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken for my junior and senior year in high school. No way. <laughs> like literally, I so I, I played sports and and you know basketball was my favorite sport. During basketball season, I would I would either if I didn't have we have we played we had games on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? I'm Tuesdays and Fridays. Okay. And practice on the other days. So I would work, I mean, I would go to school and then basketball Monday through Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday I would work from eight to four at KFC. Every single weekend, 16 hours. Get it, baby. Get it. Eight to four. So I was I, I was up every morning my junior and senior right. in high school. What'd you do at KFC? Uh, cashier. I mean, oh, I didn't so long I at all, but I was mostly the cashier. The chicken frying wasn't really my thing. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. I did cashier Burger King. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> Cleaning them bathrooms some toilets was not fun. No. No. Not at all. No. Them no. Be, ba- them Burger King bathrooms were not fun. Right. But I'm going to tell you, you know what? I can't believe I thought about that first. So I, I have a job, and all my friends know this, too. So when I was in college... Um, I left college for a couple of years. I was in college messing around and stuff. So I left for a couple of years and just was working full time. And so I got this job delivering porta johns. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Give me some more. So, uh, <laughs> I get this job, right? This might be your intro story. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, my family and my friends still laugh about this job to this day. I've been there for quite some time, as a matter of fact. So um, I uh, I used to deliver these porta johns to either construction sites when they're building houses, right? Mm-hmm. Or to um, the nicer ones, the cleaner ones would go to people's homes that they were having like parties and events at their house for the weekend. Yeah. Right? And so I would. I would, uh, I would, I had to, I had to be to work at like five thirty every morning. I was okay. 20, 20, 21 years old, uh-huh, uh-huh. and I would be at work. I wouldn't get home until like seven p.m. Okay. So, and it was a dollar. I think it was like seventeen dollars an hour or something. So I was making no, really you're doing good. good. Money. Yeah, yeah, you're doing well then. In the nineties, right? Yeah, no, you're killing and it. So I and I worked my butt off. So because I'm like, you know, I, I got to get my stuff together. I'm trying. I'm getting back in school, so I just wanted to save up as much money as possible. And um, I, dro- I drove the truck to campus one day <laughs> to see my girlfriend. And I parked on, like, the outskirts of campus. And you had, like, the, the, the small septic tank on the back. I'm putting you on a big screen for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Let me tell you, that job, it, 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 built, it built some character, I tell you that. But anyway, lo and behold, a carload of my friends happened to ride by and see me getting out of this truck. And uh, the rest was history. <laughs> that's a good story. I like that. <laughs> you said Bill's character. Bill's character. I, I think a lot of people can identify with that. Hey, 
I mean, you know. I mean, look, I deliver newspapers. Road, you don't always do what, you, what you're supposed to do, then sometimes you got to do some things you didn't want to do. Oh, I, look, I delivered newspapers um, when I was in college. Did you? Oh, yeah. In college? Was, in college, I did it. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, yeah, I did it. I did it. Uh, I mean, it was one of the jobs I did in college, right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it paid really well, actually, considering other jobs, because you only deliver for a couple hours a night. Okay. And so and I made as much night, money. Right? Huh? Middle of the night? Yeah. 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 Like, you get up. I would get up at, like, 2 in the morning. Yeah. And um, go pack them. And then you start like, cause it depends on when they finish. Right. Cause they would have to print the newspapers and be finished. Sometimes they finish at midnight. Sometimes one, like they're not, they, you can't get there too early because the news paper company was still press. These are physical newspapers. So they have to print all this stuff. Right. right. So sometimes they'd be late with printing it and bringing it to you. Especially, you know, particularly on Sundays was the main day because Sundays is the right. thick newspaper. Coupons. The coupons and all that. So that thing be thick. Absolutely. And, and I used to have a car. And when the, <laughs> let me tell you, I had like, I had a, a Delta 88. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a car in college in a second. <laughs> okay. I had it, but you know what's good about the Delta 88 now that I reflect on it? When I was delivering newspapers, I was the only guy that could fit all my newspapers inside the car yeah. <laughs> to go on my yeah. run. Right. And right. I had to make two or three runs. <laughs> <laughs> I could fit all my newspapers in that car. <laughs> I would have been able to fit all the newspapers in my car as well. Which was a? I had a 1984 Buick Regal. Oh. A straight boat. Yeah. I, well, that's what my Delta 88 was. My Delta. <laughs> Listen, I've, I've been paying $50 in gas since college. So, right. <laughs> so I, I never knew the gas price went up or down. Exactly. I'm like, I've, I've been, been paying $50. Right. Exactly. I'm I like, never I'm had $20 gas. gas bill. Sure. So have I. So have I. Hey, look, we got to close out, man. Tell, tell the small business out here is something, how they can recreate your level of success. Give them some words of encouragement, support for those that have made it to the end of the show. Um, I would just say, Stick at it, you know, keep positive people around you. There are going to be people around you that tell you that you can't do it. You can do it. Trust me. I've seen a lot of companies do it. Um, you know, really starting from scratch. I would, I would, I would, uh, make sure you have positive people around you. I would make sure that you have a nice, uh, 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 religious foundation, um, and get smart people around you. Um, I am probably the least smartest person in my company, but I hire smart people all the time. <laughs> that's so true. Um, man. What's that? No, that's so true. That's so very true. That yeah, statement. I mean, you know, that, that, that's, that's it's, what it's, it's a cliche statement, but people also, well, how do I, how do I find a smart person when I don't have any money? Um, well, it's hard. Um, you, you know, cause when you're starting out, you're by yourself. And so, uh, typically you're by yourself unless you have, you know, partners, um, you, every dime you make, you've got to figure out the best way to spend that money. Um, you know, pay your bills first, obviously, you know, it's just, it's just like your personal finances, right? Pay your bills first. Um, because you, you, you're going to need to get a line of credit or some type of, uh, financial backing soon if you're going to, if you're doing well. And it is not easy for businesses to get any type of funding. It, it, it took, it took me quite some time and I was doing pretty, pretty well. Uh, at least I thought the banks didn't think so <laughs> apparently. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I would say, you know, keep, keep, you know, smart people around you as you grow, put money away so that you can hire people and that you can, you know, get lines of credit. Those lines of credit should be used to grow the business. Um, you need to hire somebody that's $125,000 a year and you factor that into the line of credit that you received. Right. It, it will, it, those people will bring you returns. Mm-hmm. Those people will absolutely bring you returns. And, and my word of advice for the people that you have around you on your team, and shout out to my team, um, by the way, because my team is amazing. Um, I, you know, you want to take care of them. I, my, my motto and my philosophy in running a business is the, my executives are in this with me. We're like all small business owners. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. so, you know, everyone wants to eat. Um, and so I try to make sure that, you know, it, it, 
being in business with me and trusting me with, you know, your livelihood and, and being able to provide for your family, I, I take that very seriously. And so I, I try to compensate, you know, as, as, as well as I can, um, to, you know, to make sure they know I'm a, they're appreciated. So, you know, in a nutshell, you know, there's no, there's no blueprint, you know, you, if you, if you do 20 podcasts today, mm-hmm. um, everyone's going to have a different story. Everybody's gonna have a different path. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, and oh, lastly, I would say, look for companies and business owners like myself um, and, and, like, and like you um, that have been through it and that can provide guidance. Um, right. That's the biggest thing. I, you know, I, I, it, it, I had people that, were, that I could bounce questions off of and, and you know, it, 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 it was so valuable, it was not even funny. Um, and I do a lot of that now. I do a lot of small business mentoring. I do it for free. Um, if you, if you are looking to start a business and you, you, you need some help, you need some, you have questions you want to ask, I am an open book. And a lot of the business owners that I know in, in my small business community, they're, they're the same way. We're right. all willing to help out because we've been there and, you know, we, we want as many of us to, to, to strive as possible. Um, it's, there's enough money out here in this government contracting world. We do not need to be uh, crabs in a barrel. Um, we, we need to help each other. We need to JV. We need to partner. We need to lift one up. We need one another up. We need to subcontract to one, to one another. We need to introduce each other to the agencies that we're in. I don't see enough of that. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it's it's too it's too competitive. It doesn't need to be. The government mm-hmm. spends billions of dollars in contracting dollars. Why mm-hmm. do I need to fight against you for ten million? No, doesn't, doesn't make, make any sense. sense. No. We are stronger together. Right. Powerful. We are stronger together. Powerful. Powerful. I think some people are gonna be reaching out to you. What's the best way they can reach out to you? Um, you can reach the out website? to me. Yeah, the website uh, TysonPMGroup.com. Um. Uh, yeah. My email is Tyson at TysonPMGroup.com. Uh, the company is on LinkedIn. The company's yep. on Facebook at TPM Group. Okay. Um, Facebook, Instagram. Um, okay. Well, we'll make sure. We'll plug all those things into the, sure. to the show notes page that we, when this sure. comes out, we'll make sure that everyone has access to all that information. Hey, thank you so much for your time today. No, thank uh, you for having me. This was great. This yeah. was great. You're a great host.